my beautiful viewers on my channel. <coughs> James Higgins Open World. Well, here we are. It's episode 7 of James Higgins World of Strange Powers. And this episode is the Liverpool time slips and mysterious occurrences in Bold Street. Uh, in Liverpool in the UK, as you can see from the title. So, uh, let's get to it. Just one second. Right, just one second. Here we go. always intrigued us is it as said as we have always believed or does time loop back on itself giving us a glimpse of a shadowy past out of the corner of our eye well there you go does it well we'll find out with these stories won't we will find if you can think, find out with these stories and decide for yourselves <laughs> get in there oh just one second here we go step back to the 1950s and 60s the strange thing about the bold street time slips is the actual time and place they are set in the following cases the people involved do not go back really far but seem to visit a particular decade or decades so far most of the sightings have centered around the 1950s and 60s this is strange in itself most time travel experiences seem to take the recipient back to the 18th or 19th century. But not in this case. Are these people simply copying each other in their experiences? Or are they genuinely taking a step back in time? Well, that's the question, isn't it? That is the question. I've been to Bolt Street. I've done a, a video of Bolt Street on, on this channel, James Higgins Open World. Uh, uh, you should check that out. Uh, so let's get to the first story. One second. Right, here's the first story today, Frank and Carol. Let's get to it. Frank and Carol. In this first tale, we find Frank and his wife out for a stroll in Liverpool Town Centre. It is 1996. His wife decided that she wanted to go and buy a book at Waterstones, the large bookstore, and they started to walk towards the area of the shop. As they approached Bold Street, Frank decided to go to another shop first, but bumped into his friend and stopped to chat in the street. His wife went ahead without him. A few moments later, Frank said goodbye, visited his shop and turned to go back to meet his wife. After reaching Bold Street, he headed on towards the bookstore. As he approached, he glanced up and was surprised to see the name, Cripps, above the door. One second. Just one second. As he was about to cross over to see what was going on, a van swept past him with the name Cardenz on the side. The van drive honked his old-fashioned horn and drove past. Looking around, Frank suddenly realized that things were not quite what they should be. He looked at the cars driving past and realized that they were all old-fashioned vehicles, such as people would drive back in the 50s and 60s. Wow! Just one second. Just one second. And then he noticed the people. Men were wearing hats and masks, and the women were dressed in headscarves, full skirts, and had old-fashioned hairstyles such as women wore just after the war. By this time, Frank was beginning to feel slightly freaked out. He carried on crossing the road and headed towards the store. As he got closer, he noticed in the window there were handbags, shoes, and umbrellas. Suddenly, he saw a young woman looking up at the shop sign. She looked confused. She was wearing modern clothes, and as she saw him approaching, she smiled at him. Wow! Hey! Wow! Just one second. Just one second. Frank went into the shop, closely followed by the young women. When they entered, he was surprised and pleased to see that it had indeed turned back into a bookshop. The young woman smiled, shook her head and said, that was strange, I thought it was a new clothes shop. Then she walked away looking extremely puzzled. Wow! Well, that's quite a famous story, that one. Uh, that particular one is. I've heard that a few times before. Very intriguing, that one. Uh, and I've been by that bookshop on my video where... Uh, about the... Uh, Bold Street in Liverpool. So you should check that out. It's down my timeline on my YouTube channel, James Higgins Open World. So let's get to the second story. Just one second. 
I just noticed there's a bit more to this story, so stay, which I'm going to do. Read, read you now. So sorry about that. Just keep reading. This is about that story. One second. Just one second. This may sound an unlikely tale, but the odd thing about it is that Frank was in fact a former police officer who was used to dealing in facts and definitely wasn't the type of person who would believe in the paranormal. Frank never stopped talking about it. Was this a time slip? Evidently, Crips was a women's shop that sold clothes and other goods decades before. Wow! Hey, one second. And Cardenz was also a well-known Liverpool firm that owned vans around the same time. Wow! Hey! Get in there! Just one second. Right, here we go. Another story. From Liverpool. Imogen and the Mother Care Store. The second story concerns a young girl by the name of Imogen. She had decided to go into Liverpool to buy her sister Abigail a few things for her new baby. Upon arriving, she was happy to see a new Mother Care store that had opened up on the corner of Lord Street and Whitechapel. Wow, just one second. Just one second. She wandered around the store and picked up a few baby items, such as cardigans, baby bibs, and gloves. She was surprised to see how cheap the items were, but thought they were on offer as the store had just opened. Taking them to the counter, she tried to pay with her credit card. The staff member looked at her suspiciously, and went off to get the manager. When she came back, she looked at the card and told Imogen that they didn't take cards. So, disappointed, Imogen went and put the items back as she hadn't any money with her. Just one second. When she got home, she told her mother what had happened. Her mother was surprised and really puzzled. That store closed years ago, she said. There is a bank there now. In fact, that's where I have my account. Wow, just one second. Wow, what a great story, eh? Wow. Not believing her, Imogen took her mother back to the same place the next day. Sure enough, the store wasn't there. It was a bank, just as her mother had told her. Wow, eh? Wow, bloody hell. Just one second, let's get to the next story. Right, here we go, here's the next story. Wow. This is a good story, isn't it? Like they all are. Wow. Soon he saw that the people around him were wearing strange clothes. Crossing over to Bold Street, he noticed that there were traffic lights where they weren't before, and bushes growing around the Lyceum, near a bar that he recognized. He carried on walking. Soon he began to feel that something was not quite right. Then he began to panic. He realized that somehow he had stepped back in time. And the time slip was not going away. One second. Just one second. Then he remembered his cell phone. Taking it out of his pocket, he tried to get a signal, but of course it didn't work. Eventually he began to really panic, but soon spotted a kiosk selling newspapers and headed over. Just one second. One second. 
the stand, he took a look at the front page of the Daily Post. There in bold lettering was the date. May 18, 1967. He wondered what to do. What happens if he can't get back to his own time? What about family and friends? Wow, just one second. Just one second. So, speeding up his pace, he reached H, Samuel the Jewelers, and tried his phone once again. This time it worked. Sighing with relief, he looked around and realized that he had returned to the present. But the strange thing was, he could still see, down the end of the road, people still walking around in 1967. By this time, Sean had seen enough and dived onto a bus to go home. When he was interviewed by the local newspaper later, he stated over four times the exact account. Wow, just one second. And... Now, you may think that Sean was making the story up to escape from the guard. But the strange tale didn't end there. When the security guard was interviewed, he stated that when he ran after Sean and turned down the dead end alley after him, he said that Sean had completely disappeared. When the newspaper checked out the facts of Sean's story, they found that everything he said was historically accurate. What the hell, eh? Wow! It's one second, and we'll get back to the next story. Right, let's get to the next story. Time slip mystery. Just one second. Right, uh, <clears throat> this is... Uh, I did have another story, but I can't find it at the moment, so... Uh, this is ex some explanations for the time slips occurring on both feet, so... Uh, I'll let you listen to this. And that's this episode uh, of James Higgins' World of Strange Powers, episode 7, uh, over and done with. And, it, uh, and the next episode will be out next, next Wednesday. Just one second, so we'll get to this. Just one second, just one second. Here we go. Explanations for time slips occurring on Bold Street. Several people have offered theories as to why Bold Street has produced so many similar accounts. A local journalist has stated that there is a crack in time in the vicinity. 4. Others have pointed to the city's underground railway system, claiming that the high voltage rails form a circle close to Bold Street, and that this might have something to do with the creation of a portal through time. 5. Rather eerily, people who worked and resided in Bold Street in the 1960s, the decade which many claimed to have slipped back to, seemed to have agreed that something was not quite right on their road. When Chris Gibson, the founder of the community and construction project Future Liverpool, went down into the cellar of one of Bold Street's shops with a colleague in 2010, they were disturbed to find several unsettling messages written on the walls. This was second. One second? Let's hear the rest of this. One, which dated to February 1966, read, God have mercy on all who enter here. Another, dated three years later, confirmed the first's warning, stating it's no joke. Wow, hey, wow, it's one second. Gibson also reported hearing bizarre noises coming from within the room including a low buzzing sound mixed with a sort of clattering. Well, what can you say about that? Just one second. There's some explanations as to uh, what's going on in Bold Street in Liverpool, in the UK. Uh, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, time slips are real, to be perfectly honest with you. Why they're occurring, I don't know. I don't know. Are there people who've been lost in time? We were living out the lives in the past. Who knows? Will we ever know? Who knows? Uh, I'm just glad I'm living in my own time. <laughs> Here, right now. Uh, I have been to Bold Street. I was a little like that when I went, but I went, you know, and there's a video on, on my channel, James Diggins Open World, of my, my, my day out in Bold Street. But nothing happened to me, but it's obviously happened to other people. Our time slips real. Who knows? But I hope you enjoyed this episode. A time slips in Liverpool and bolt in Bold Street in Liverpool. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.